I wanted to highlight, I think uh, we have done similar programs. Uh, some of you may have noticed the International Food Safety Training Laboratory logo uh, somewhere in there. And we have done activities uh, in uh, the region and in the Arab region. And um, the model of the trainings that were done in, that were presented in this, uh, in Jeremy's presentation uh, is really something that can apply everywhere. And now that we have some recordings available, it will be even easier to broaden the reach. Um, I, I wanted to emphasize uh, one key aspect of this uh, initiative, and it is that we were aiming to train local instructors or future local instructors. Um, we understand that in a cohort of 80 people, uh, there might be 20 that could have enough knowledge as we saw the scores at the end. Um, there, there may be 40 that have sufficient knowledge to teach the entire course. There might be 60 that have sufficient knowledge to teach one part of the course because the scores, uh, of course, had to do with the entire uh, program. And as you saw, the program included advanced analytical techniques, DLC, MSMS, uh, pesticide residue analysis, high resolution mass spectrometry. So these are topics that are not necessarily implemented and technologies that are not necessarily implemented at everywhere yet. So we did have some people who were just at their first contact with some of that technology and the methods, the multi-residue methods and, and all of that. So um, now, we are, we, have, we are in the process, I, would, I guess, of selecting future trainers. So what we're hoping to do is this domestication of the capacity building. So not always requiring people to move in from another uh, continent to deliver training, but rather organize through our, our program, organize uh, regional events that will have lead instruction by local scientists who work in this field. And as Jeremy mentioned, this opportunity uh, here created a community of uh, analysts that uh, were very proactive at creating you know, address books and, and um, trying to share information about we, what each of them does. And so this is gonna strengthen, it's gonna help strengthen the uh, community of food si safety scientists uh, on the continent. Um, one of the downsides we rarely talk about, but and it's less and less over time, but we still have to consider that is the online training uh, is difficult in some countries where the connectivity is not great. So some people were not able to participate at all in the live sessions because they did not have enough bandwidth or, or even the availability of, uh, of a computer during their work hours to participate in the sessions. So um, management buy-in is an important factor in training like this because um, as Jeremy mentioned, it's difficult for people to do everything after hours. And we definitely, want to hold the live sessions during the day, not at night, uh, because people have family obligations, but then you need uh, management buy-in to let people have the time to do it. So despite the limitations that were brought about by COVID, uh, we were really, really happy uh, of the outcome. We definitely have uh, a very strong team and in selecting the future local instructors, we have, it's difficult because we have a lot of people who would be very well qualified to do it and have great communication skills. So our next step is to help this very much smaller group, obviously, um, learn how to deliver the program themselves, but with the hands-on uh, portion so we're going to be look, going into a laboratory with our small team of future trainers, and we're going to be doing all of these methods to ensure that uh, they obtain uh, the, the results or accurate results, hopefully, <laughs> and as Owen was mentioning, accurate is important, precision is good, but <laughs> um, and 
this will, of course, improve, hopefully, the trade between countries. We have a, a large focus on trade because um, that's usually the reason why the laboratories get developed beyond measuring nutritional quality. When you get into the food safety parameters or the SPS requirements, it's usually because of trade. So we try to um, be conscious of that and put a large emphasis on facilitating um, analytical understanding and uh, exchange of results, exchange of information between countries that will help facilitate trade. So I'll leave it at that. I can talk about these programs for hours, as you can imagine. They are, I, in my view, they are fantastic. It is absolutely wonderful that uh, Université de Laval is ho hosting the laboratory. Um, and I can't tell you how excited we are to eventually <laughs> host some hands-on training in that facility as well as in other facilities around the world. Thank you.